Manufacturing creates a lot more than just physical goods. It also creates a tremendous amount of data. Join us as we talk to Odin Technologies about how they built a system to help manufacturers analyze their data using IoT on this episode of Stack Chat. John, thanks so much for joining us today. Tell us a little bit more about what Odin Technologies does. Mark, thanks for hosting me today. Odin is a company that focuses on the Internet of Things for the industrial sector with the specific mission of improving the efficiency of the manufacturing process. Um, for example, uh, we have customers that produce, um, you know, you know, 500 uh, million to a billion dollars worth of uh, product a year uh, with high scrap rates and by leveraging the Odin platform they're able to reduce uh, as one factor the amount of scrap material that they create. Uh, in one case we've had a customer that has managed to reduce their scrap levels from 23 percent down to 9 percent after implementing the Odin uh, solution. That's great so it kind of captures a lot of data and then can somehow relay that back to the customers. What does that actual architecture look like? A big part of our architecture is around managing the data that we've collected from the users and making that data available and actionable. Uh, the starting point for all of this is, of course, the collection of data. We start with a device that sits on the factory floor, which collects data through the uh, PLCs. Um, that data then gets sent up to the cloud uh, using Google IoT. Uh, we pull the data off of Google IT using PubSub. We process that data in real time. We run whatever learning models we have against the data. We also move the data over into a time series database that sits on top of Bigtable, uh, as well as into BigQuery. In addition to collecting data from the machinery, we also collect data from other sources, for example, the operators through an operator interface that we have on the factory floor. Uh, if a machine is down or there's a production problem, the operator will be able to add uh, data or add annotations that allows us to then go back and do further analysis, and that comes back in through the cloud as well. Much of that data then gets stored into uh, Google SQL, and uh, we can then pull that data out as well using BigQuery. If you could kind of go back to when you started, uh, were there any like decisions that you think you might change? In hindsight, there are always decisions that we would make differently. Uh, one example is our choice of uh, to use a graph database uh, to represent the entities that sit on the factory floor. At the time uh, that the decision was made, uh, the observation was that uh, the factory floor does not follow a strictly hierarchical model and the way that you want to view data on the factory floor does not follow a strictly hierarchical model. Um, you will sometimes want to organize your data uh, by factory line. You will sometimes want to organize your data by, for example, type of, type of machine. Uh, we decided to use a graph database at the time. Uh, we thought that it would accelerate uh, our development efforts, and it did. Um, however, as we have scaled up, uh, we have started to run into the limitations of that graph, of the graph database. Uh, one of the um, areas of concern is the fact that uh, graph databases tend to follow be schemaless, and so. What we have found is that you know sometimes um, engineers will introduce new features, and because there isn't um, a lot of structure, uh, you know, by introducing new features, uh, assumptions that are inherent in the schemaless architecture uh, end up uh, creating uh, issues uh, down uh, the road. A second choice that, that we made was to use an abstraction layer on top of Bigtable uh, to support our time series database. The choice of Bigtable. Um, has been great. Big table scales wonderfully and more recently uh, Google has added replication capabilities that um, has been highly beneficial to our uh, you know redundancy strategy. So uh, we, you know, we feel that we're much more reliable. Um, however at the time we had a choice between a few different abstraction layers and the abstraction layer that we chose uh, has reached somewhat of a dead end in the public community, which means that it is not being actively developed or worked on by others. Um, and so features that were missing at the time remain uh, missing while other abstraction layers um, have moved forward. If we were to start again today, we would probably use uh, TSDB. And I 
fully expect that over the next 12 to 18 months, we will be move, making a move uh, to using TSDB as our abstraction layer. Thanks so much for coming in and telling us about how you kind of built this architecture to scale. Uh, thank you for uh, hosting me today, and uh, I really enjoyed our chat. Try setting up your own data pipeline by using this hands-on solution that walks through using Dataflow and BigQuery. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe for more great Google Cloud Platform content. We'll see you next time on Stack Chat.